On Larry King Now, drag superstar Trixie Mattel. When I was a young man, I had a stepdad who used to call me a Trixie whenever I was acting too feminine or sensitive. Like, I used to hate that word, and now it's, it's like my favorite word. What does RuPaul do that others don't do? He writes the checks. He doesn't just give you the corn, he teaches you to grow the corn, and it's up to you to grow the corn. What do you make of Donald Trump? Well, we're both uh, dudes in wigs that wear too much bronzer. Plus, a lot of the girls, they take their penis, they put their testicles up in their body. Oh yeah, Larry, oh yeah, like TSA. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Today's special guest is drag queen and musician Trixie Mattel. Trixie's ascent to drag royalty started on season seven of RuPaul's Drag Race, where she placed fifth, but gained an unrivaled global fan base for her unique style and witty comedic prowess. She has since been given her own show on Viceland alongside fellow drag queen Katya, simply called the Trixie and Katya Show. After releasing two full-length albums, Two Birds in 2017 and One Stone in 2018, Trixie's embarked on a North American tour called Moving Parts. And if that wasn't enough, in March of 2018, Trixie returned to RuPaul's Drag Race, claiming the All-Stars 3 title. Welcome to the show, honey. Thank you for having me in this fake living room. Really appreciate it. <laughs> fake living room. Yeah, totally. You call something fake is a riot. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I know fake when I see it, okay? okay. All right, you're Brian Furcus. Yes, I am. When did Brian Furcus become Trixie? So I was 18, I was in school for music, and I was in a production of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and a drag queen was not available, and I had to fill in. Filled in once, kept doing it. It's cyclical. Then it's a part-time job, then it was a full-time job, and... You know, I just, I couldn't get a call back at my job interview at Forever 21. What, what attracted you to dressing as a woman? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I believe I'm fully a woman. Um, people think I'm, you know, Dakota Fanning from far away all the time. Um, but to me, I, I didn't want to look like a woman or a man. I wanted to look like a, a girl's toy, like a little kid's toy, like a Mad Little Pony or a like Barbie. Like Mattel toys. Yeah, exactly, or a Polly Pocket. Um, I couldn't play with those toys when I was younger, and so as an adult, I was still just like fixated on them. Where did you grow up, Milwaukee? I grew up in the deep northeast of Wisconsin, so like in the rural woods. What did you like about it? What did you like about dressing as a woman? I don't know, I guess at first it was like, I liked, you feel like you're somebody else, and so you get this license to kill because if you're on stage and you bomb, nobody really knows it was you. I mean, I used to walk out of the club carrying my suitcases, and nobody would know that was me earlier. So I guess you get to be brave. Notice you don't look anything like Brian Furcus. No, out of drag. I mean, I look like Patrick Stewart as a farmer. <laughs> Did your parents like this idea? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not, they're not impressed. They're not unimpressed. They're just sort of like, if you can pay your bills, good for you. Like, they've seen me once. They haven't seen me in any of my television shows. They're just not like... No? They're not, you know how sometimes, sometimes people are so country that nothing Hollywood is impressive to them. They would rather I would like probably in like local government. Do you have brothers or sisters? Yes, my brother's an attorney and then I have two sisters who are younger than me. So I think my brother, my brother's like a three-time Iraq war veteran. I think he stole all the thunder. What does he think of what his brother does? I think at first he was a little weirded out about it until I thought, I think he was afraid I would never make any money. And then when I started making more money than him, he dropped the subject. <laughs> All right, how did you decide to be Trixie Mattel? So um, when I was a young man, I had a stepdad who used to call me a Trixie whenever I was acting too feminine or sensitive. So then in drag, that name just sort of made sense to me. Like I used to hate that word and now it's, it's like my favorite word. GQ recently wrote about you. Trixie Mattel is part of a movement that proves drag isn't just a niche curiosity, it's entertainment for everyone. When did this movement start? Well, you know what's funny? It's like um, RuPaul always says we're all born naked, the rest is drag, but I think people are now realizing that drag has been around them all the time. It's like 
well, do you like the movie Mrs. Doubtfire? It's like, do you like Dana Carvey as Church Lady? Do you like Tyler Perry doing Medea? It's like, you have been liking drag. You just haven't realized, oh, that's drag. Milton Berle used to do it in 1948 on television. He'd dress up as part of the shtick. Yeah, so people are just realizing, oh, I guess I do like drag. Once you call it drag, I think people get scared of it. Uh, I, with the drag movement's popularity, are you competitive with other dragsters? Uh, dragsters, uh, you know, um, I mean, in the industry, you know, it's like, you ever seen Showgirls? Yeah. Remember the Pearls? Yeah. It's, it's like that. But Who's, we're men and we fall, you know, we're so padded up. When we fall, it's like a crash dummy. Nobody really gets hurt. <laughs> Are you number one now? I mean, I think RuPaul's number one forever. Um, and then I think even someday when he passes away, his ghost will be more famous than any of us. But um, I'm probably like number... 12. What does RuPaul do that others don't do? Or what makes RuPaul... RuPaul writes the checks. He what? He writes the checks. Like RuPaul, sort of like on Drag Race, RuPaul like takes his mega stardom and gives you like a... He gives you like, he doesn't just give you the corn, he teaches you to grow the corn and it's up to you to grow the corn. You like him? Yeah. Do you like corn? Yeah. Love corn. I do too. On the cob? Totally. Oh yeah. Me too. And RuPaul, I mean, I think she's just, she's the original. I mean, you have to think like in the 90s for a tall African-American man to put on a blonde wig. It was pretty impactful. Do you call yourself a she? In, dra uh, in drag world, when someone's in drag, you call them a she. And then when they're out of drag, you call them a he. So like Trixie's a she when I'm in drag, people are like, hey girl. Tell me about your act. So in my act, I play guitar and sing folk music and I do stand-up comedy. So it's sort of like if Adam Sandler was dressed as a uh, 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 My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> you do folk, not country? I, I do folk country Americana, yeah. Like that kind of blend. I mean, I do like country music, but just like a gayer, you know. You, do, you someday might be transgender? Would you consider that? No, I live 100% as a male, and I feel male all the time. I mean, I even feel male now. Do I look male? No. Trixie, next on RuPaul Drag Race, and maybe a little politics on this edition of Larry King Now. Don't go away. We're back with Trixie Mattel. Earlier this year, the New York Times published an in-depth piece on the drag industry, and the title read, Is This the Golden Age of Drag? Yes and No. Is it both yes and no? Well, I think it's sort of like any time there's like an economic downturn, like um, in, 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 uh, in the when I used to work in the makeup industry, they call it the lipstick effect. Anytime there's like an economic downturn or political strife, lipstick sales skyrocket. How do you explain that? Because it's a small, cheap thrill, you know, if you have a hard day, it's this $14 item that lifts your day. And I think drag kind of has the same lipstick effect. It's sort of like, right now I think in American history, this snapshot of drag is like, it's sort of like post-Nazi Germany, there was all this like, a lot of the queer communities were doing huge different types of, it was like an arts renaissance. And it's sort of like whenever you feel oppressed, you just make more art. I think that's what's happening. And there was cabaret at the beginning of the drag, of the Nazi movement. Yeah, I mean, and, and what is cabaret except a couple less wigs? Yeah. In that article, Randy Barbato, the man behind the production of RuPaul's Drag Race, is quoted as saying, drag queens have the hardest job in show business. I would guess that's true. It's serious. It, you, know, you know when I realized it? I was on a show recently, and I was like, um, if you're a real celebrity, or a real anyone, like, you show up totally naked, someone does your hair, someone puts clothes on you, someone puts makeup on you, someone picks out your outfits, writes your script, tells you what to say, and it's like, for drag queens, we are wild Oh, I don't get told what to say. And... You don't? No. Well, you're a drag queen then. Okay. <laughs> but for drag queens, we're, we have to do it all, because you know from the beginning of drag, you got, you got a show pay of $50, and you got to figure out how to make a costume and choreograph a number and try to take home some money. So it's, it's, I think drag queens are like Swiss army knives of talent. I like when you said you don't label a piece of art on where it comes from. If an art form is born in the gay world, you don't have to be gay to like it, right? 
No, yeah. I mean, that's like, that's like saying listening to Selena automatically makes you Hispanic. <laughs> if you watch Tu Wong Fu, you're not automatically gay. You are, know what I mean? Are most of your fans gay? No. Oh my God, my audiences are like at least 50% straight people. Most of them women. I, at my shows, the first three rows is usually all women. A lot of moms and daughters, a lot of married couples, a lot of young teen girls. Um, I think for some reason Trixie Mattel, I, it, um, if you're a young impressionable girl, I think you're being bombarded by, you know, people telling you what a young woman is. And I think Trixie makes people be like, oh, I guess that people can do whatever they want and I don't feel so. How long does it take to do your eyes and those little starlights under the eyes? Oh, you like that? Well, it's like, um, what is that? So it's glitter. It's a gay thing. And we just, it comes right out of our eyes. And um, I mean, to, to me, I just lay all the products out on the table and then just kind of roll around. But it takes like an hour and a half. In the GQ feature on you, you said, sometimes I let the undertow of our political reality shape my idea of what's possible, especially this year. I didn't think a show with two drag queens shooting the shit could be a big thing. Uh, you think, uh, you say, President Trump is helping your career? I sort of, I sort of think if everything was hunky-dory, nobody would feel interested in uh, um, what I do wouldn't seem so interesting. Part of what makes drag cool is the edge and the, the other factor. Um, and with our show, the Trixie and Katja show, it's like, at, because everything right now is so, <gasps> people want to turn on their TV and see a couple of idiots in chicken suits and lipstick talking about whatever they want. I mean, what do Trixie and Katya talk about? Oh, we've talked about everything from religion to death to crying to alcohol, drugs, high school. I mean, each episode we pick a new topic and we just sort of um, freeform comedy on that. Would you like to meet the president? Oh my God. Wait, which one? Trump. Oh, pass. I'll wait for the next one. Um, <laughs> I would have loved to meet Obama though. He was a, he's a great guy. So he was my, I, I, I was 18. It was my first time voting and I got to vote for Obama. It was, it was cool for your first time voting to watch the one you vote for win, that was really exciting. Well, I know Trump many, many years. What do you think, what do you make of Donald Trump? Well, we're both uh, dudes in wigs that wear too much bronzer, so I think <laughs> we probably have a lot more in common. Um, I, I, well, I think it's a perspective, you know. Uh, I don't know, people can only understand, uh, maybe he just hasn't seen a lot of, I don't think he's like walked in somebody else's pumps, do you know what I mean? Would you, well, by the way, getting used to wearing high heels. Oh, it's garbage. I'm still not used to it. I'm happy we're seated. Do you hear my cheap shoes squeaking? <laughs> Is it hard to walk? Um, it's hard. And you know, the corset, because I'm in one of those steel boned torture devices, plus all the hair on my eyes. I mean, there's six strips of fake eyelashes on the top and two on the bottom. It's wild. Oh, I'm a Muppet. <laughs> After the break, Trixie's funniest fan encounters, her first kiss, and her favorite wig. This and more in a game of If You Only Knew, and we'll be right back on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with Trixie Mattel. Needs no introduction. Okay, what inspired the look today? Um, I wanted to serve something a little more conservative, so I wanted to do long <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> This is conservative for me. There's not a lot of skin showing, high neck, bolo tie, a nod to my country western career. This is a bolo tie with obviously all rhinestones and I don't like to show my, I have man shoulders. How long did it take to, to get made up and dressed? Uh, I was like an hour and 45 minutes. How about you? Me? 10 minutes. Work. See, I need to transition into. Do you wanna be a guy again? Well, turns out being a white guy with a guitar not that special. <laughs> Being, you know, Janice from the Muppets with a guitar, pretty special. All right. They tell me that an aspect of drag is tucking. Oh, yeah. Tucking is to get your... Why don't you, you take the lead? Why don't you... To get your penis so that it doesn't look like a penis so that you look like a woman, right? Yeah, you kind of take your, your, your sex organs and you origami fold them into you something what? that could make you money. You fold them? I don't do it, I've never done it. What do you do? I'm a champion of drag race and I've never done it. I never wear anything that's very high and, like right now I have a skirt on so there's, you know, it's not smooth under there, but you can't see. 
But a lot of the girls, they take their penis, they put their testicles up in their body. Oh yeah, Larry, oh yeah, like TSA. And then they take the, the shaft and they pull it back and they tape it. And that's how on stage, when it's a man dressed as a woman, it's a perfectly flat illusion. I've never done it, there's no amount of money in the world that could get me to do it. Do you ever it. wear slacks? Oh yeah. Out of drag, I fully dress like a... No, but I mean in drag, you're always skirts. I like jumpsuits, like Dolly Parton jumpsuits, but I never wear like pants. I... Okay, gonna be a little weird. I know, well, it's hard to pull off pants and drag because it automatically makes you look masculine, yeah. I think. Uh, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. Okay. Oh, Most God. embarrassing moment on stage. Oh, I've fallen off the stage at least five times. Because of your shoes. Yep. No, I was, and also can't see. There was this theater called Oasis in San Francisco, and I confidently walked right off. I fell so fiercely off the stage, both my shoes fell off. Person you'd least like to be stranded on a desert island with. Oh, wow. Uh, people who, just somebody who talks. Childhood celebrity crush. Oh, God. Um, Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell. Do you remember that program? Yes. He was First kiss. Maybe today. Still waiting. Straight male celebrity you'd most like to see do drag. Oh, God. Oh, someone big, like Shaq. <laughs> like someone big and masculine. And, yeah. Who, what male celebrity you wouldn't want to see in drag? Oh, nothing too easy. I don't want anybody too feminine, you know, like a clay, like a clay ache and somebody with soft features. That's too easy. I want a, I want a challenge. Funniest or strangest fan encounter? Oh, people on a daily basis walk up to me, panic, and tell me something extremely graphic and violent about their life. Really? People will walk right up to me and go, Trixie, I was abused. And I'm always like, just now? You know, I... Favorite episode of the Trixie and Katya show? Oh, favorite episode of the Trixie and Katya show. I like the one about death. I death. like to go to the deep, dark stuff. I think in drag, we get permission to talk about some really heavy stuff in a, a fluffy way. You have a theory about death? Um, I, think, I think it happens to most of us. Yeah. Biggest splurge? Oh, I collect guitars, so I have a few guitars that are like maybe... Go to Guitar Center? I love a Guitar Center on Hollywood. Or on Sunset. Mm. Um, I have a guitar, a Gibson guitar that was limited edition that's like $8,000. Was there a guy like, named Gibson who designed those guitars? Um, yes. Drag name you'd give me? Oh, girl, Larry Queen. <laughs> Favorite wig? Um, I'm actually quite into this one. It's Off the nice. shoulder. It's sort of like a mullet, but... Celebrity you'd want to guess judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, Catherine O'Hara and Parker Posey, famous from the Christopher Guest movies. Yeah. I think in their movies, they wear wigs and play characters. I'm like, they know how to judge drag. Trixie Mattel in 10 years. Oh, definitely not doing this. Want to do a movie? Oh, maybe, but in, the, but in 10 years, I want to have collected enough money that I can buy a small cabin in northeast of, Northwoods of Wisconsin and just Go, go alone. With a guy or alone? Maybe not. Two guys. Two guys. Think big, Larry. Why not? How about a girl? Why not? She can't be prettier than me. We were flooded with fan questions for drag superstar Trixie Mattel, and she'll answer them at our final moments on this edition of Larry King Now. Don't go away. Back with Trixie Mattel. Boy, she's got it going. National tour, everything happening. We've got a load of fan questions. We'll get to as many as we can. Shirley Morell on Twitter. Is it hard being a legend and an icon? Um, for most people, probably. For me, no. Just fall out of bed this way. Lou Dapu on Twitter. Is there anything you ever regret? Oh, I regret impersonating RuPaul on RuPaul's Drag Race. Why? because it was horrible, I bombed, and I forever stained my name in front of RuPaul. At Trixie underscore Katya on Twitter, how do you feel about people bullying you on social media? If it happens, I don't see it. I don't read the... I don't know. Why but would do you? do people tell you it happens? Oh, yeah, like people will, you know, like if you read the comments, of course, girl, nobody, and in drag world, maybe if this isn't true everywhere else, you'll read 100 comments that are positive, goes in one ear, out the other. 
you read that one thing about like, you have brown teeth. A week later in bed, midnight, you're like, do I have brown teeth? <laughs> like, you can't read that stuff. That's Sophia Helena on Twitter. Will you ever collaborate with someone for a new song? Oh yeah, I have so, I mean, one of my dreams is to quit drag and write music for um, music icons that I like. So Casey Musgraves, Miley Cyrus, there's a lot of young women I would love to write music for them. You like writing songs? Love writing songs. At Kate Benning on Twitter, what do you do when you're not touring? What does your time look like when you're off from the road? What do you do during the day? What do you do? Yesterday I had the day off, I went to the gym, and then I went back to my house and played guitar in my garage all day. Do you have a boyfriend? I do. I do have a boyfriend. We went out to dinner. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm gone like 28 days of the month. So. What does your boyfriend think of what you do? Oh, he thinks it's really cool. He's seen my programs. Um, he thinks I'm good at it. I was scared to tell him at first, though, because some people get too into it. Like, you never want to date somebody who's secretly, like, uh, a very into it. Do you know what I mean? Like, turned on by it. I get it. Because out of drag, I'm not a, I'm a man, so... At Unicorn Master on Twitter, what were some of your biggest highs and lows while on tour or while making your album? Oh, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I don't have like a team of songwriters or anything. It's literally me drinking a sugar-free Red Bull in my bathroom, you know, in my <laughs> underwear with a guitar writing the music. So to go from that to seeing it on iTunes, to seeing it sell, to seeing like Billboard just named my album One Stone, one of the best albums of the year. And I'm like, you know. Some of that music I wrote, you know, in an airport bathroom, so. You gotta be thrilled, though. Oh, it's crazy. You know, I'm 13 years old, barefoot playing a guitar in a tree. Did not think I would be doing this, so. At Katya's Contact on Twitter, how did you come out and at what age? Any advice for coming out? Oh, I have a terrible story. I thought I was fully, like, dropping a bomb. You know, on TV, they romanticize coming out. Your mom sprints out of the room, you know, your dad hits you. But for me, I was just like, I'm gay. And my mom was like, Ugh, girl, we know. How old were you? 19. It was no big deal. My mom's a total hippie. She was just like, whatever. Were you bullied in school? No. I know I don't have an inspiring story. Everybody was always nice to me. At KJM1016 on Twitter, when will we see a new season of the Trixie and Katya show? And will Katya be back for that season? Well, RuPaul's the producer of that show. And if I said anything out of line, there could be a red dot on my... RuPaul could have me killed in minutes. So I'm not allowed to say if it'll be back, but okay. you never know. And finally, at Marvel Twixie on Twitter, if you could choose any artist, living or dead, to cover one of your songs, who would it be and why? Oh, June Carter Cash. It's one of my all-time favorite musicians. Great girl, knew her well. Fabulous. You did? Oh, I knew. Oh, Johnny was one of my many times guests. Was she just... She I mean, she's so best. funny. She was so funny, and she was an amazing songwriter. She's my, she's my Elvis. You're a great guest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, honey. A big thanks to my guest, Trixie Mattel. Be sure to pick up a copy of her two albums, Two Birds and One Stone, and buy tickets to her Moving Parts tour. Visit TrixieMattel.com for more information. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time.